XR 会議2023にご参加いただきありがとうございます XR 会議2023はプラチナスポンサーキークアウトナイアンティック NTT コノキューパナソニックシフトールシンクセンス他スポンサー各社の協賛で開催いたしますセッション開始まで今しばらくお待ちください間もなく次のセッションが始まりますコメントは配信画面右のコメント欄からお寄せくださいまたスクリーンショットや SNS の投稿に関してはサイト上部の記載をご確認くださいコメントは配信画面右のコメント欄からお寄せくださいまたスクリーンショットや SNS への投稿に関してはサイト上部の記載をご確認くださいそれではどうぞ Hi everyone Thank you for inviting us to talk about RQU at the XRKG 2023 event My name is Johan Hanegaaf I'm an architect by training and a co-founder and head of product at Arkeo. I collaborate with Design Tool to create buildings, interiors, and urban plans together using VR, AR, desktop, and mobile devices. Using the latest generation headsets, users can work in mixed reality, and this for allows for some completely new workflows for architects and other spatial designers, as you can load the existing models or create new geometry directly on the real world to mix real and virtual spaces. This allows for some interesting use cases that we're going to highlight today with some examples of our latest Arcu release that runs on a MetaQuest standalone headset, as well as iOS, Android, Mac, PC, and other devices. So everyone can join the same design process. We've been working on Arcu for some years now and always followed the latest hardware capabilities. Starting this year, we made Arcu into a true mixed reality app. And talking a bit more about this is our founder and CEO, Hilmar Gunnarsson. Great to be here with all of you today. At Arcu, our mission really is to create the spatial design tool of tomorrow. We want to empower people to design, collaborate, and connect across realities. Now, the inspiration for Arcu originally was architectural scale models, physical scale models that we love to create but take a lot of time, effort, and money to create. So, you know. Way back then, we thought, what if you could actually design models like this in a matter of you know, hours instead of days, weeks, or months? And they could still feel as real as physical scale models. What if you could jump into them and walk around with other people from wherever in the world? And you could modify them from the inside. You know, that would be a pretty magical experience. 
So it's been an interesting journey. Um, you know, we have gone through you know many kind of ups and downs in developing the technology because what we are creating is pretty complex to create a modeling tool from the ground up for VR, AR that's collaborative, that's supposed to work on mobile devices. It's it's no no small task. Um, this is an interesting example from some of our early days when you come starting to do some modeling in Archeo. In those early days, when we try to create something, it more often than not turned into some interesting piece of sculpture instead of uh, a building. But we've come a long way since then. And we continue to iterate kind of on the overall user experience for Archeo. And I also wanted to share with you, just for the fun of it, some of the early prototypes we did of the Archeo UX. You know, we probably did about 30 or 40 prototypes to really figure out how, you know, it should work to design, you know, architecture in human scale, standing inside a building where you can literally just kind of lift the ceiling by kind of raising your hand. But none of this uh, would be possible what you're doing today uh, without kind of uh, great VR headsets. This is actually one of the first VR experiences that I had, you know, 30 years ago, probably. And thankfully, the headsets we have today are very different than what I experienced, you know, uh, way back then. And this year, actually, actually seen the kind of uh, the uh, announcement and launch of two major new devices with the Apple Vision Pro, which will hit the market sometime next year. Uh, it'll be a groundbreaking device when it does. And with the Meta Quest 3, uh, an amazing device basically a $500 spatial computing device. And I have to say, we are just totally in love with it. Um, during this live stream, we'll be showing you some examples of what you can do with Archeo on the MetaQuest 3, uh, working in full color mixed reality, you know, like never before. So when we think about Archeo, um, we really think about how we can simplify architectural design and review, mm -hmm. you know, with RQ, you can sketch designs with other people. You can review designs at true human scale, whether you create those designs in RQ or you bring them in from tools like Revit, Rhino, uh, or SketchUp. You can blend realities with amazing mixed reality capabilities. And RQ integrates seamlessly into your existing workflows, into your existing design tools. And of course, you can collaborate with other people wherever they are on a number of devices, including tablets, phones, desktops, PCs, and Macs. So it's really this combination of these core capabilities that makes Archeo really, really unique. And for us, this year has been a lot about optimizing workflows. And Yoni will share with you some of those details, what you've been doing to do exactly that. Thanks, Yoni. So yeah, 1.6 has been a big, uh, big release for us. We uh, been adding a lot of features uh, like under the hood, but uh, like the majority of the features we'd like to discuss also a bit in more depth is co-location, boundarylessness, and oh, let me just go back, <laughs> large model support, a review panel, and the plugins and import uh, updates that we did. Now, the first one is the co-located mixed reality. And this is an important one for us because when you're in mixed reality, you can engage a lot more with your the people around you, but also the context. So it enhances Arcio in so many ways. I'd like to just show you this little video and to start a bit over. So when you're in co-located uh, mixed reality, you're together with several meta headsets in the same space. When you jump inside that model, it will bring the people that are around you to that same uh, position. And when you're going back to the large scale, it will put the model back into the position where you locked it. You can lock that model on a position anywhere you want by uh, using the wristband and using the lock tool. And this will gather all the people that are co-located to you. If you're in a human skill, you can turn pass through on and off, and you can also lock yourself into place. And this will, as a host, uh, distribute all the people around you to where they are. When you then jump back to the large skill, this would put all your uh, like nearby people back into their original position so you can work on that model like being a cat. At any time you can jump outside of that lock, you can basically uh, teleport out of it or use the grips to get out of that lock position, but uh, you can just restore it again by either jumping down in an already previously saved lock or locking your wristband again to uh, get back to the lock position for everyone in the team. 
Now, there's a lot of things that you do with co-location. You can do, of course, uh, something in human scale, uh, but uh, there's like, we're going to talk a bit about that as well. So another thing we're really excited about is the boundaryless mode. And this is a big one because uh, I think when showing this video, we all got to this point where you're using mixed reality and then the boundary shows up and you go through the boundary and then the app closes down. Like this, this has been an experience that we never really liked. And we're happy to announce that Arcu is now a mixed reality first application and we don't longer need the boundary. Uh, whenever you're walking around in VR in Arcio, we now blend the reality into your virtual feed to make you prevent from walking into an object or uh, like still see where you're going and not longer requiring the setup of a boundary. When, when you're put on the device, it's directly ready to go in, into Arcio and in mixed reality. And also when walking around, blending these realities, it can actually help to align these uh, virtual objects that you put inside of your space using mixed reality. Uh, for the rest, uh, like this is enhancing the experience of Arcio uh, overall because you don't need to set up your devices uh, any further. So another thing we're really excited about is uh, loading large models, and this has been uh, like something that we've seen from our users as well. Like Arcio is most favoritely used on mobile devices, devices like the Quest 2 or 3 that uh, simply cannot handle that much uh, geometry. And as we know from our architecture industry, we, we have pretty large models. So that's a big problem to overcome. And one of those uh, major features we've been adding to 1.6 is the support of those large models. So we now have the plugins to bring your uh, files into Arcio, and when you get but closer to those models, you will actually see them decimate and get more geometry. This uh, depends on the device that you're using Arcio on. We'll basically use the, the maximum capacity what the device can handle. We render more triangles. And you can see over here there, we have like how much triangles are currently loaded in the scene and how much triangles are currently visible. So you can load a lot more geometry in the scene. And based on your device and your view settings, you see that uh, like the, the polygons available for your uh, device. When you're jumping back between skills or jumping inside of the model, we just update this live. And uh, it's good to note that this, all of your models that you load to Arcio are rendered on the device itself. So you can even use this offline in environments without a good internet connection. You can literally use the boundaryless mode and the co-location to go out in the street with your model on top of the real uh, model, and then use some of those, uh, those features in RQ. Another feature that's been um, something that we've seen people use a lot more, like we, we've seen uh, RQ not only being used for design, but also reviewing existing models from other design tools. And uh, for this, we added the reviewing panel, which uh, com combines a couple of the uh, previous features we have and include some some of the new functionality of uh, reviewing. So in this reviewing panel, you have access to your saved views. You can just jump between the saved views like you've been used before. These can be exported to Revit and you can gather people around you in meetings. The BIM data got, is living on this panel as an, under a new tab. So you can inspect objects and see what parameters are in there. And uh, the new view settings panel shows how many polygons, objects, uh, things are loaded in the scene. If the shadows are turned on and off, your views and, and other settings are set. Uh, if you combine this with some of the co-location boundaryless modes and uh, yeah, basically allowing you to load these large models in the site, there's a lot of interesting use cases you can do. You can use Arcio's geometry engine, the pass-through cubes to align real and virtual objects, just blend these between them by, by using a cube like this. Or you can use uh, a new feature that we've added, uh, the X-ray mode. The X-ray mode basically makes all the geometry that is in your Arcio scene transparent. So you can use that to slide if you want something to be more transparent or less transparent to see how that looks in your real world. And last but not least, but not least we've also added a lot of other improvements and uh, like small changes to Arcio and bigger changes. Uh, some of them 
showing in these videos, or we added new tutorial videos that make it easier to get started and to get familiar with the tools in Arcio and Mixed Reality and various skills. There's a little info card you can find on these scenes to teach you about some of the uh, basic and more advanced features of modeling in Arcio. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please uh, have a look because there's very interesting stuff in there. Uh, the grouping mode got a new special mode on the main menu in Arcio. We've added new colors and props uh, to the Arcio library, and we're planning to add a lot more in the coming months. And we did a major uh, update on our cloud portal and our plugins that are up to 10 to 20 times faster to load large models into Arcio. This was also to support, now we support these large models, we also make it easier and faster to get these models to Arcio. Uh, interesting to, to know is that these uh, improvements to the cloud, they, they also make it easier for getting your models into the Quest uh, and not having to set up a meeting. Uh, this, you can update the Revit model and it will directly update on the Quest and you get your latest file from there. Uh, we also added support for Revit 2024 and uh, SketchUp 2023, and we've added a manual file browser on the PC and uh, iOS and Android version of RQ. So you can also load your individual files to RQ. So yeah, that was a quick overview of uh, like the main uh, features of 1.6. We'll later also do a bit of a demo to show that a bit in more depth. Uh, but we also like to talk a bit about uh, use cases of RQ. And um, we've done an interesting, like we had couple of interesting things going this year, uh, including visits to some of our Arcio users in the US. And this was uh, very inspiring to us to also talk to some of our users and see where they are at, but also to get a look into the, the kitchen of how they've been using Arcio in the field, sometimes in meeting rooms, and just hear also what our users are thinking about some of the features that we've added in 1.6 and are planning for future updates. And this is a dialogue that we like to keep going. And uh, David is going to show you a bit more about some of those use cases uh, with, that we have on our website. All right, thanks, Johan. Uh, all right, let's get myself in here. All right, so I'm excited to talk a bit about this because these are some excellent use cases that help inspire me and many others to think about how they can leverage Arcio. So the first one that I would really like to point out here is from Nord Consult. They've been an excellent use case to first you know, kick this off. And they are a Norwegian engineering and architecture firm that is multidisciplinary. And when they started using Arcio, they were using it in this way that was just for design review. And you can see in this picture here, they're using multiple devices. They're looking at an MEP model. So you know they're collaborating and just reviewing and connecting and just utilizing VR for that ability for understanding like composition in space. Um, what was nice after they really picked up using this, this tool is that they really dove right into some of the interactions. It was kind of their first dip into what's possible past just looking at things. Um, and it was interesting to see the challenges that it faced too, because you know there is they're using a lot of models and anyone in the AEC space when they have a you know, whenever we link that MEP model, we know how scary and large these things can be. So when we are trying to make sure that we're helping them give an interaction to these type of models. It's you know that's it's kind of a high bar to set, and there's an interesting practical use case that came from this MEP model and integrating it into the Arcio app that I'm going to share. Right. Let's see. Uh, who's my two? Uh, there we go. So one thing that just kind of stood out at first was that they were bringing this MEP model into a existing building that's their office and. They were having these sound issues that were just kind of replicating a lot of like you know just a lot of sound and they were trying to figure out where it was coming from and by putting the headset on and walking around in the space and moving towards the sound they were able to use the past uh, they were able to use the pass through textures to look past what was actually rendered in the headset so the physical location and see what was revealed in the digital model it's kind of like a way of integrating your digital twin content in a very practical way and this to me is very exciting because it shows like a use case that really wasn't expected, at least for me. And it also shows like a very effective way of like utilizing your digital content and making sure that it's actually up to, you know, up to detail of what you've been building. Um, so I've really enjoyed this like practical, like integration of physical and digital. Um, all right, so let's, let's jump over to the second one. 
And then, so the second use case that we want to highlight is from Rise Architecture. They're a New Jersey-based architecture firm that looks that builds mostly around um, residential and commercial-based uh, buildings. But when they approached us, they were, you know, we were collaborating with them on this idea of like, how do you start to integrate your Revit models in the same kind of a similar way as NorConsult? But I think they really kind of captured the similar dream that we've all, I and mean, imagine a lot of AAC people have had where you do the site visit, you put the headset on and you walk around the space. So um, let's pull that up. Where'd it go? Um, oh, it says my name. So in here, they went on site and they brought their headset and they had already set up their model in Archeo. But when they're here, they're you know going on here and doing basically, a, you know, checking and make sure all their things line up. And when they're going through a space that's not, it's, you know, basically a retrofit and they're going through a lot of this area, there's these moments that kind of stand out when you move past that boundary and you start to see that fade of, you know, the physical space and the virtual space. And that was actually one of the pieces that made us start to kind of consider, well, well why do we need this boundary here? And that's actually what helps us identify as like the, like the first and only mixed reality app right now. Uh, well, not mixed reality app, maybe first mixed reality first app, but, um, and it's just, it's, I think what's kind of key to, to see in these examples is like, there's so many moments when you're blending both the virtual and the physical at when they start to kind of look very similar together. And I think that's the important piece there of understanding, you know, what's past the window and what that user can see, because typically it's some empty skybox that we're not really sure. So. Um, and so these are these two use cases that really have been a, you know, like a big help towards the 1.6 launch. And, you know, we want to welcome more people to continue to like approach us for these type of ideas because it helps us kind of build this app in the long run. So, um, all right, let's go back to the slides. Do, all right. So live demo time. Let's go, Johan. Yes, let's do it. So uh, we have some some interesting things to show. Uh, like some of them are uh, we, we briefly touched upon, uh, but the best way to, to show this is actually doing this live. And uh, so there with me and see if everything goes okay. <laughs> so I wanted to first uh, maybe uh, briefly chat a bit about the the headsets themselves uh, because they have been. Like, like Hilmar mentioned, there have been some major improvements here. And uh, like especially if you compare the form factor of the, like the Quest 3 to what it used to be on the, on the Quest uh, 2, then you see there's a big improvement in, in size. But most importantly, the, uh, the comfort and the lenses. Like these lenses, the pancake lenses, they are a lot more uh comfortable to look through they're they have like a much bigger sweet spot and the resolution is just a lot bigger so it's it's just much more comfortable experience than uh, all of the vr headsets that we had before um there's technology in here that makes it also very good for mixed reality like to do high uh, resolution cameras in there it, it makes the headset uh, almost perfect for us uh, to use in mixed reality the um Things that we'd like to show here uh, for today's demo is the uh, like how to get that Revit model into the headset and uh, how to then work with those uh, those devices. So uh, typically we uh, have already the RQ Cloud uh, environment. You can just give that environment a name. Let's just, just call this one. Uh, I'm going to make a new group called Live. This gives me uh, invite invite code. Uh, that I can connect to my Revit plugins. And uh, by the way, these cloud groups can be made uh, new whenever there's, like, uh, you want to make a new group, you can just uh, leave the group and make a new one uh, because these are only to transfer your files to the different devices. They're, um, they're basically exposable because after seven days, your, uh, your files uh, will be non available anymore on to, for sharing. So this one I connect to my Revit plugin. This now make me connected to this uh, live uh, Archive Cloud group. And from this moment on, I'm able to upload my file to the Archive Cloud. Now I have this, this larger file that I already uploaded, so we don't need to uh, go through that. But there's also a smaller fragment over here of the same model that I want to look into in, in a bit more depth. And you see 
uh, tools like Revit, they, they are struggling sometimes already with uh, models of around this size with MAP and, and other things loaded. And if you load that to Archeo, you get a little slider that you can use to control the level of detail. Now, in this case, I want to inspect this, uh, this detail in, like in the maximum detail, this apartment. So I'm just putting my slider all the way up. If you're loading a full model, you can also just leave it on medium or low, depending on your size. It will export more or less geometry. Now, just this, um, this plugin prepares the files for Archeo, gathers all the textures, uploads it to the cloud, and next time you open the headset or a device linked to the group, the model should be there. Here we are. For the Oculus headset, here we are. So let's just make this one big. And I'm going to position myself here. So right here, I have the model loaded already. So this is, uh, like, let's just inspect it a bit. This model in total, we have here 3.3 3 .3 million polygons loaded in the scene. And when I get a bit closer to the tower, you see the number of polygons is increasing. And if I jump in the tower, let's just put this one over here. And I just teleport myself a bit more closer to here. I have about one, well, now 900, 1.1 million polygons visible in the scene and 3.3 totally loaded. If I go back up to the large scale and jump inside here on the street level, I'm also getting more polygons. And this is basically we're just sitting on the, what the device can handle uh, still comfortably with uh, comfortable frame rate. Another thing we added is the ability to uh, teleport through vertical surfaces. So especially if you load models with doors and windows and a lot of stuff, you you often don't want to uh, worry about the the yeah those not being able to teleport through those. So now you can do that in Arcio. And when you do that, you directly land on the vertical surface. Now if I scroll a bit out here and jump into the apartment over here, right in this apartment, we see this is a lot of geometry. We have like around 1.2 million polygons visible currently. And I'm able to use the X-ray mode to see the actual geometry we're actually all having loaded in here. So this, this shows pretty well uh, the size, the sheer size of the model that we have loaded here. And with the slider, of course, I can put it less and higher. And I can just put it back to normal mode. Um, it's good to mention that if you're uh, putting things like shadow or X-ray, that the, the uh, like what your device can handle uh, is is lowering a bit. So basically, uh, if you switch some of these rendering modes, uh, we will uh, like update that for you so that the device can see uh, like all the geometry available without losing performance. Now let's go to the other scene that I have loaded over here. So this is a smaller model. Let me just position myself. Hopefully you guys can see me and hear me correctly. So uh, this model was loaded from the import panel. So I have them actually here. This is the Revit, uh, like the large Revit model that we loaded. And this is the smaller uh, apartment. It just got placed like this and, and put a bit higher. Uh, in that model, if I look a bit closer, I see there's a dot. That dot is, is me. I, I just saved my position already. I'm going to jump or to that model's uh, position with my teleport tool. And when I start walking around now, you would see the boundaryless modes uh, kicking into action. So I'm now, like when I'm stopping, I see VR. When I'm walking around, I'm seeing uh, the reality. And I can use this in my advantage because my apartment is not that big. I can just walk to my kitchen over here to see this part of the living room. And I hope you guys can still hear me. <laughs> like I will just talk a bit louder. Uh, but from here, when I keep walking, I can use that uh, pass-through mode also in my advantage by just uh, blending in the reality and making some pass-through geometry on top of my real world. 
So now in my Revit apartment, there's a pass-through wall that I modeled here. And if I walk through that pass-through wall and I'll stand still here, I will see the VR environment with my pass-through wall that I brought in. And I want to extend also a ceiling into my environment. Just going to stretch it a bit like this and a bit more like this. So when I stand still now, I will see my ceiling and this wall in pass through and my Revit model in virtual reality. If I cut some extra holes in this model, I can see a bit better what's going on. Like I have here, I see behind my wall, uh, not my kitchen, but the virtual model again. And if I cut here, the hole in the roof, instead of my ceiling, I'm seeing a hole with the structure and the ducts. If I add some extra geometry in here, so maybe I wanted to just uh, show how it looks like when I add some extra duct here, uh, I can just use Arceo's modeling tools there. So I have a little kitchen that is modeled over here. Let's just walk through it. Um, so wait a bit. So we uh, I currently I see actually there's there's some pipe sticking out here, and this is a good example of a BIM clash or an issue that we need to resolve. And I'm going to put uh, like I first going to inspect this one. So there's um, like our BIM. A tool that we can use to to highlight the data. I see it's a copper object, and it has all the properties of the air. So I actually know this is a, a water duct, and I'm going to put a sticky note on here to just say remove, and I'll just I'll look at that one later. Now there's uh, some other things I can do here. There's uh, I got the door to the bathroom. I'm actually going to open my real door and I'm going to walk through my real door. That's my dog. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm going to walk into this uh, bathroom. I hope you guys can see this. So there's, uh, we see a toilet over here, a shower and a washing machine. While well, I'm actually standing in my corridor of my apartment. So this is pretty fun. I can able to use that boundaryless mode to have a look into my bathroom and see how everything will is going to look like. So I'm going to be walking back through my actual living room. And uh, see where you guys are all all at. So that was a quick overview of designing spaces in Arceo using mixed reality, where you can blend the real and virtual worlds together. As you saw, it already helps spatial designers around the world, and we're very excited about the future of these headsets. We can't wait to add even more functionality and usability to Arceo in the coming months and years. If you're interested in spatial design or would like to learn about how Arceo works, you can download the app for free by searching for Arceo in the App Store. You can learn more about our features, user interface, and examples from architects using the app on our website, archeo.is. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining this session. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us via our website, Discord, or social media. Thanks everyone, and have a great rest of the event. This session is finished. The session was thank you very much. 次のセッションページへとご移動いただき引き続き XR 会議をお楽しみください。